Don't be afraid. Look at that. Oh. Hello and welcome to the Scatterful channel. And today, you shouldn't have clicked on this video. Now I get it, most of the PC stuff I put out there is affordable and it's budget. And what we're doing today is slightly different. Like I said, slightly different. Nothing too crazy. Okay, okay, don't click off the video. Please don't, please don't. I know this may be freaking out some of you. Trust me, keep watching. Okay, I think that's enough exposition. This right here is gonna be one of the most powerfully dense computers I have ever built on this channel. We are fitting all this into the Asus Prime AP201, a micro ATX mesh case. And you may be asking, why are the components so overkill? Well, that's morally to prove a point. I'm gonna show that you can build a very powerful computer in a small package that still has enough thermal capacity to dissipate all the heat of a 4090 and a 13900 KS. And this will more or less be the ultimate content creation, gaming and streaming computer in a small package. So if I haven't scared you off already, then you're in for the ride, you're stuck watching this video. But just want to mention that you can build a very overkill computer like this through your local micro center, because that's where I sourced quite a few of these components, which all of that can be found in the description below. And with that, let's get started. So I'm not really going to get into the specifics of what parts I've decided to choose for this build, because in reality, maybe 0.001% of you watching this video even have the means to build this computer. But if you're curious, I went with a Z690 Strix gaming Wi-Fi motherboard from Asus because it's the only micro ATX motherboard with built-in Wi-Fi. The 13900KS, in all honesty, is overkill, but I could have requested it, and I did. So here we are. <laughs> and don't worry, I already BIOS updated the motherboard. We've got 128 gigabytes worth of DDR5 memory running at 6,000 megahertz with a cat latency of 30, which is really tight. And then we've got this two terabyte Lexar NM800 Pro, which is gonna be the boot drive, but I'm gonna add more storage later on. I'll tell you what though, I do not wanna open up this box incorrectly, because it is, <laughs> this processor is so special. What makes the 13900KS so sought after is that it has some of the best silicon. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> this is supposed to be a silicon wafer here. Let me open this up. Ooh, I don't want to get this thing dirty. 13900KS. Oh, I, I'm keeping this box. <laughs> it is, oh, oh, what's this in here? Um, let's open this up. i9, we got a sticker here. We've got, okay, just a regular manual. Intel's giving you all the goodies. They're letting you know you have one of the best binned 13900Ks through the means of the 13900KS. Anyways, we are keeping this box <laughs> for sure. This PC build is gonna be something else. So we got this contact plate here because we know that Alder Lake has pretty poor heat dissipation when it comes to how well the socket bracket or whatever is attached to the CPU. So that's why we've got this, which we're just going to replace the stock bracket with this. Here's our torque wrench. Let me go ahead and unscrew this for you guys so you can see it. Let me drop this in very gently. Give it a little jiggle. That is in. Okay. Now let's put on the contact plate. Let's see, which way do we put this on? Like that. Okay, cool. There she goes. One of the best <laughs> processors Intel has ever made and I'm never gonna be able to see the name of it ever again. At least I have the box though, as memorabilia. Okay, <laughs> hear me out. The RAM is overkill, I get it. But this PC isn't for ordinary men and women. Only those with enough responsibility can wield this power. Now this memory here, really fine-tuned. 6,000 megahertz cast latency 30. The goal is to maybe push it to 66 megahertz with a cast latency of 30 with that 13900KS for even more performance. And we're gonna populate each of these RAM modules. Oh, 
Oh yeah, there's no way we can remove the heat shield from this. Not even gonna attempt it. We're just gonna put this in as is. Uh, but now we need a screw. Okay, one sec. <laughs> All right, everyone. Get one last good look at this because when this goes into the computer, you're not gonna see that 13900KS ever again. Okay, so we took a little bit to install the mounting block of the Arctic AIO onto the motherboard. So now we're good to go. But while we're at it, we're actually gonna go ahead and put the motherboard inside the PC case first. However, there's one thing we gotta remove. And you know what? I think now would be an appropriate time to give out a certain shout out to a subreddit that has been super helpful in this whole build process. So if you guys haven't checked them out yet, MFFPC is a dedicated subreddit to medium form factor computers. And a lot of people have used the AP201 and I've seen a lot of different configurations and way to, ways to actually like build in this case efficiently. So I wanna give a shout out to that subreddit real quick. And what I'm about to show you guys in a little bit is a trick I learned from that subreddit for this PC case in order to fit the AIO, power supply, and the 4090 in this small of a PC case. Anyways, this is what the inside of the AP201 looks like. All right, cool. We're gonna drop in the motherboard now. And goes the motherboard. Let's see, standoffs? Yep, standoffs are all covered. Oh, this, this computer is going to be so sick, guys. Okay, that is on there. Okay, what to do next? Well, we could throw in the power supply, but I'm actually gonna hold off on that for the moment. I think it'd be better to install the AIO now, get that mounted onto here, then install the power supply, and then install the rest of the fans here on the bottom, hook everything up, and then put in the 4090. So we got a little bit of a ways to go. Oh, this Arctic now, is it gonna fit? Is it gonna fit? That is the question. Let's see here in real time. Will it fit? Okay, okay, okay. Oh, we gotta remove the shroud first. That's right. So I know you should be wondering, why are you removing the PSU shroud while the PSU is not even in yet? Well, like I said, there's a little trick from the MFFPC subreddit that I learned that we're gonna use to install the SFX power supply without the need of a bracket. <laughs> we don't need this. You guys watch this brilliance here in action. Oh yeah, that's definitely fitting. Okay, sweet. Let me just see if I can one hand this. I could use another hand. <laughs> Wait, nope, I got this, I got this, I got this. So here's a current update on what the rig looks like. We got the AIO in there, and now we're gonna go ahead and put in the power supply. And there's actually a really intricate way how we're gonna mount it in here. Again, thanks to the MFFPC subreddit. Here is the Cooler Master V1100 SFX power supply. <laughs> it is so compact and has so much power. It's gonna be enough for the 4090 and the 13900KS. Obviously, I'm not gonna overclock it, but should have more than enough wattage for our needs. So we're not gonna actually mount this into the PC case traditionally. We're gonna use zip ties. So we're gonna put the power supply like this. Actually, you know what? Hold up. We gotta bust out the 4090. Oh my Lord. We need to do a little test fit. I need to see how high I can mount the power supply. So for this build guide, I've gone with the ASUS ROG Strix RTX 4090. Although, I got an open box deal for my local micro center. So that's what we're going with. And I have not actually seen this thing yet. It will fit in the PC case, believe it or not. Okay, check this out. Oh my goodness. Okay, we're gonna do a test fit. We're not officially putting in the 4090, but look and that, oh. So this is a little preview of what the GPU is gonna look like, which is a little bit dirty, 
But now for SFX power supply, we got to fit this thing like, oh yeah, it's going to, it's going to be a tight squeeze. It's going to be like right here. All right. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and figure some things out. All right, so quite a bit of time has passed since that last shot and now the fully finished computer, I wanna say about three weeks. So I wanna tell you guys a series of events of what happened with this computer while trying not to bore you guys. So for starters, at that moment last in the video, I found out I had to use custom zip ties to mount my ITX SFX power supply to this PC case because the included power supply bracket would have worked but it wouldn't have let me fit the really awesome Arctic 360mm AO that I chose for this build because I wanted the ultimate cooling for that 13900KS and it is possible to put that AO into this case. I just had to find a way to not use this. So I had to order some custom zip ties from Amazon and after many numerous attempts, I finally got the power supply mounted onto the front of the PC case where the fan is facing into the front mesh panel so it isn't interfering with any of the heat that could come off any of these components here. So that actually worked out not too bad. But then after I assembled everything and tried to turn on the system, only two of my RAM sticks were posting and I got ridiculously stressed out. I was like, okay, is the RAM faulty? Is the CPU faulty? Is the motherboard faulty? Is there something that's misaligned on the CPU mount? Is like the tightening of the AIO bracket where the CPU cooler plate goes onto too tight? Nope, it was none of that. It was just a slightly faulty motherboard. So after getting a new motherboard and taking one long afternoon to like treat it like a baby, do some very careful BIOS updates here and there, all on a 12400 first before even putting in the 13900KS, Everything was posting, everything was good. And fortunately, this is running on the latest BIOS update. All the RAM sticks post. The 13900KS is running smoothly, but I can't enable the XMP profile on the RAM because 4.6 of DDR5 RAM still kind of doesn't work on both Intel and i5, Intel and AMD processors when enabling XMP. So at that point, I should probably manually overclock and try to get a stable overclock, but I'm too lazy to do that right now because right now the system posts and it's all working. And overall, I put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into this and a lot of stress, but it's finally working. And I think this will easily be the most ultimate gaming and editing solution in this size of a package for a computer. If you don't want a super huge tower, but want all of the power and computing capabilities, but in a smaller package, then I think this micro ATX solution with that i9 and 4090 is a pretty nice bargain. So there might be a few more features on this PC coming up on the channel, I don't know, we'll see, but I just wanna document my building up until this point and the issues I ran into and finally getting the system to where it is, which you guys deserve to see. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and check out all the components I featured in this overkill computer at Micro Center using the links in the description below. So with all that being said, thank you so much for watching and this is the Scatterbook channel, signing out.